O oh, glorious day. What a glorious day, right? But why do we say that? When do we most often say, what a glorious day? On days like that, right? When the sun is shining and the weather's great, just the right temperature. Actually, kind of a lot like this past week, wasn't it? I know more than once, more than twice, I said to myself, I really need to be on a golf course right now. <laughs> but my clubs are still in the back of the garage and I can't get to them. So um, one of these days we'll do that. But there's other times we say, what a glorious day. Maybe when we get some kind of exciting news, you know, some kind of great great thing that's happening in the family, a new member in the family, maybe through marriage or, or through a birth of a child, or some kind of special event that, uh, that is taking place that, that would say, what a glorious day. Maybe a, maybe a wedding or a, a graduation or something really important like opening day in baseball this week, right? Hey, defending champion Astros. I mean, how cool is that? What a glorious day. Or maybe, maybe it's a parade. And you know, that's what we're really commemorating today on our church calendar, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday was the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem. He entered to shouts of, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd was geared up. It was a parade event. The king of Israel had come to Jerusalem to take his crown and demonstrate his power. What a glorious day that was. This was the one who had come into the world. He had come in such a, a meager way and yet was greeted by angels and an entirely an entire heavenly host. If you go back to, to Christmas and that story, what a glorious day. That birth, that glory was confirmed by travelers, wise men who sought Jesus, found him and worshiped him, worthy of the glory. And there were many other glorious days when we look at the, the story of Jesus, the glorious journey that we are, we are on. There were days of great miracles, like changing water into wine and feeding thousands and thousands from just five loaves and, and two fish. And in fact, the crowd on that first Palm Sunday, the crowd that greeted him were those who had seen and, and those who had heard about his raising Lazarus from the dead and taking him out of the tomb. And now... On that Palm Sunday, now today was the day. The king had come, the one they had been waiting hundreds and hundreds, even a thousand years for. The day had come. What a glorious day. And to make it even more glorious, there was a voice from heaven that recognized how glorious this day was. Jesus said these words. This is all from John chapter 12. Verse 27, he says, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then, it says, a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it. And I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there, they heard it. And they said, it sounded like thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Well, you know, that's not something you hear every day. A voice from heaven? The Father's voice from heaven? The Father speaking to his Son? Wow, what a glorious day. And it wasn't because of the weather. It's because what was happening with Jesus. 
what a glorious day until until Jesus spoke and then something seemed amiss something seemed wrong so I want you to picture yourself as the one who had been long waiting for the Christ you've been hearing the stories that have been passed on from generation to generation and so on and something seemed wrong so Jesus answered this voice has come for your sake not mine now is the judgment of this world now will the ruler of this world be cast out and when I am lifted up from the earth will draw all people to myself you see there was the celebration there was the voice from heaven and then Jesus spoke and it wasn't amiss until those words when I am lifted up from the earth I will draw all people to myself have you ever had have you ever had one of those glorious days that seemed to be going so well and everything was wonderful and a glorious day became inglorious really really quickly maybe it's one of those mornings where you wake up and you are in a great mood you had a great night's sleep everything is good your coffee is just right that morning if you're a coffee drinker for me coffee just right is no coffee but you have everything going well you step outside and it's a crisp beautiful morning you're thinking everything is going well it's going to be a great day at work in fact I know it's going to be a great day at work until you get in your car and it won't start and now you're going to be late and the boss is going to be mad and you start going through all those things suddenly your day has changed you try again and again and it just won't start up until that time it was going well or, or maybe it's one of those family gatherings and everybody's getting along well and, and you're excited because you know even uncle so-and-so from out of town has come by and and everything's going well until the topic that is usually off limits and for good reason comes up and the whole day just blows up well you know that's kind of what happened on this Palm Sunday it was a glorious day until it wasn't until Jesus said he was going to be lifted up from the earth and then he would draw all people to himself wait did we did we hear you correctly Jesus we have learned from the law that the Christ remains forever how can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up who is this Son of Man we we thought it was you but the Christ the Messiah that we were expecting the one that we were hoping for that one was going to be around for a long time in fact forever and now you're saying you're going to be lifted up Jesus answer to them really didn't satisfy them if we were to look on in the chapter 12 of the gospel John goes on to say that they didn't believe he actually interestingly says that they didn't believe but then later on says there were many who did many officials who believed but they didn't go public it says they were afraid of being cast out of the synagogue the reason why John 12 43 because they love the glory that came from man more than that that comes from God and therein lies the problem for a lot of us really for all of us for a lot of our glorious days our glorious days 
are generally glorious because we define them that way. Because we have said that this is what a glorious day is. Because the day has met our expectations and our hopes, and they bring us joy and give us the satisfaction that we seek and in the way that we are expecting it. And so in that little exchange, what gets discovered is that Jesus was not the Christ they thought he was going to be. He was supposed to come and stay and rule forever. And with his rule, there was going to be peace and prosperity. And I think that's one of the things they really like the idea of. Prosperity and deliverance from Roman rule. And those words about being lifted up and then a little turning over of the tables at, at the temple that same day, it all started to give them some doubts. But, but what about us? When do we have doubts? How do we react when Jesus is not what we expect him to be? Or he doesn't do what we want him to do? or even expect him to do. When, when we pray for someone's health and they don't get better, when we pray for the rain to stop and we get flooded, when we expect fairness at school or at work or within our own society and our culture and we find it scarce, does that make the day any less glorious. You see, what makes any day truly glorious is a relationship with Jesus. A relationship, a relationship with the one who came to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine immeasurably more than we could hope for or expect. That Jesus. But Jesus did it his way. And that was not in the ways that brought the glory of man, but it did bring the glory of God. You see, Jesus' way was to come and take a crown when he came into Jerusalem, but not a crown of gold and gems, but a crown of thorns. Jesus' way was the way of the cross. Time and time again in John's Gospel, we hear Jesus say these words, and we heard him in chapter 12 earlier, now, now is the hour. And so John, looking in hindsight, in verse 33, even said that, when Jesus talked about being lifted up, it was to show the kind of death that he was going to die. Lifted up, death on a cross. And the cross, and if you were at Bible class today, what a great, great uh, lesson by, by JB today. The cross was anything but glorious. To the people of Jesus' day, it was the most cruel way to die, and it was reserved for the worst offenders, for the worst sin, and the worst sinners. And yet, through the cross, God redeemed his people, redeemed us to himself, and restored the broken relationship between God and man. Because on the cross, Jesus, the Lamb of God, took away the sin of the world. And he bore it himself on the cross. Pointing to the cross, Jesus said, Now, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. 
It doesn't seem the same. But Good Friday, Palm Sunday, what a glorious day. The day that our Savior died. It was not what the world would expect. But then again, they didn't expect what would come just a couple days later on Sunday either, did they? When Jesus rose from the tomb, the glory of the cross was confirmed. Jesus was lifted up again in the resurrection. What a glorious day. And the resurrection itself is a prelude to an even more glorious day. When Jesus comes again in his fullness of his glory, and every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What a glorious day that will be. But until then, until then, as followers of Jesus, we live in the glory of the cross. And that is so important on days that just don't seem like glorious days. You see, I think we all have some of those struggles. I think we have those days where we wonder, how could anybody call this a glorious day? You know, we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's pretty good. They were kind of sleepy in the first service. You guys <laughs> must have gotten the word. He's going to make you say it twice if you don't give it some <laughs> oomph in the first service, first time. But you know, I, I know that, I hear that, but I'm guilty of not seeing every day as glorious. In fact, I'm guilty of not seeing a whole year as glorious. I will tell you that when 2018 rolled around, I was really glad to see 2017 go. I was tired of a lot of Harvey and reconstruction. I mean, just, it was a tiring year. But because I had those feelings, and I had those experiences, did my feelings and expectations make last year to be any less glorious? See, the cross makes it clear. The cross makes it clear that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Romans 8, 19. The cross makes it clear that God is for us even in those difficult times. He who did not spare his own son, also from Romans 8, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is indeed interceding for us. Jesus even when we don't realize it's a glorious day, is there speaking on our behalf. And that makes that day pretty glorious. The cross makes it clear that neither life nor death, nor angels or rulers, things present, things to come, powers, height, depth, nothing in all creation. There is nothing that will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know what that means? That means that in Jesus, and through his death and his resurrection, every day, even days that don't seem like it, days that don't meet our hopes and our expectations, every day is a glorious day. And my prayer is that I remember that. And my prayer is that you will too. Amen. And now may the peace that passes all of our understanding guard your hearts 
and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.